my very first rally car and just like forgot to check the water, right. two jugs, got the hose and started with the tap and the engine went this milky mayonnaise liquid. The whole engine was covered. I filled, I filled the whole engine up with water. Ah, uh, head gaskets. They're one of those things that are, are such a small, less than 50 bucks for this part, but if it fails and you don't fix it, you can blow up the whole engine, do tens of thousand dollars worth of damage. Yes, it's one of those things that strikes fear into the heart of any car owner, hearing the term head gasket. Um, but it needn't be something that's terrifying. We're gonna talk you through some of the ways to tell the head gasket is the thing at fault. Hey guys, I'm Molly. And I'm Dan, and welcome to the Mag Garage. In this series, we're gonna arm you with a bit more car knowledge. And who knows, next time your car needs some care and attention, we could even save you some cash. This is Madvice. That is a head gasket. Now there's tons- I've got a better prop actually. You, okay. you continue. Okay. There are many, many different types of head gaskets depending on the configuration of your engine, the brand, the, uh, the outlay. Uh, this is a four cylinder inline. Molly was holding one for that. That is a Subaru Boxer four cylinder, the EJ. So what does the gasket do? Well, it's essentially a glorified seal or like an O-ring or a washer it basically forms a sealing surface between two components. It's a very intricate and very complex thing, but it does basically that job. It's a seal. Two, well, two of the major components of the engine is the, the block, the main body, and the head on the Subaru, you've got two heads, because two's better than one. <laughs> but the gasket, you can see a tiny bit here, that is going in between the head and the block. So that's the bit that fails when you need a head gasket replacing. But what we're gonna do now is we're gonna talk about some of the steps you can go through to identify if that is the problem. So if your mechanic says you need a head gasket, these are the things they will be looking for and the things to check with them that they have looked for when they're diagnosing this. Number one, probably the simplest and easiest way of investigating whether a head gasket may have failed in your engine is to remove the oil filler cap. Now you need to do that after the engine has been run up to temperature, but then cooled down. So the engine has to have been running recently, but now it needs to be cold. The key to that is you'll find a substance, possibly underneath the oil filler cap, that looks a bit like mayonnaise. It actually is a, Delicious. a weird form of mayonnaise. It's an emulsion of water and oil mixing together. So the only way it can happen is when the engine comes up to temperature and you have those two components in there. Obviously there should be only oil in there, but if water's in there as well, it means one of the little seals between the oilways and the oilways has broken. And that's how the oil and water is mixing and it forms this mayonnaise type material, which is an emulsion. And that it's is one way. It's not good for the engine. It's not good for the engine, but it's a key that something is mixing that shouldn't be. Next one. Very simple also, uh, engine temperature gauge. What is the engine saying it's doing in terms of coolant temperature? Now, when a head gasket fails, you can get uh, pockets of high temperature steam in the engine because you've got uh, coolant being replaced by air, essentially. It could also be a lack of water, right? Yes, exactly. So if the gasket's losing water to somewhere other than where it should be, you start to get pockets of air and then you get spikes in engine temperature. The engine temperature gauge will show you that. So often the reason uh, a gasket will kill an engine is because you don't do something before it overheats. And then it's all the problems of the overheating that cause all the big expensive damage to exactly the engine. Exactly right. Yeah. But the problem is there's lots of other things that can cause your engine temperature to rise, namely a, a coolant pump might be on its way out or the radiator might be dying. So it's important to diagnose and eliminate those problems. If you're still getting engine temperature problems, it could be down to the head gasket. What else can we do? We're talking about the cooling okay. system. Oil, water temps. Pressure. Oh, I love a bit of kit. Oh, look at the beautiful colors. That's my favorite part. Um, so, okay, this is a, this can check the pressure of the system. Obviously, if there's a leak in the gasket or damage in the gasket, it won't hold pressure. Yes. So, in, in the water system we're talking about, coolant pressure. Now, this is not something any home mechanic generally has, just knocking about places. It's a specialist bit of kit uh, and it's relatively expensive. It's really awkward me holding it like that. I'll just get rid of it, okay. shall I? <laughs> so, basically, what you do is the cooling system works under pressure, like that's. Do you want to... Under to, pressure. Yeah, I thought you might want to see. Uh, it's designed to work at, at pressure. I'm not going to say under pressure again because you're going to instantly break into song again. Uh, so one of the ways of testing if the cooling system is working properly is by generating pressure without the engine running. And that's what this does. You've got a series of caps that you screw onto the cooling system uh, and then a pump which you then apply pressure to the cooling system. Pushing down on me. And... <laughs> Sorry, and I was trying to think of the other lyrics. Sorry. So I don't think I've ever experienced anything more off-putting than Molly singing at me, but that's, uh, yeah. 
So it will establish if there's any leaks. Now, it leaks anywhere in the cooling system. It could be a coolant hose, it could be a radiator. But if you look all around the engine and you haven't found any visible leaks, there's really only one thing left that it can be. And it's our friend, the head gasket again. It could be one of these little seals here, not into the cylinder itself, but across the coolant gallery. So that's one way of telling. If the pressure is dropping on the gauge and you can't see any external leaks, it could be the cooling system leaking internally uh, on the gasket itself. So another way of finding if it's this damn thing again. <laughs> okay, so we can look at the oil, we can look at temps, we can look at pressure. There's one more. So remember we were talking about the oil system, the lubrication system. If you've got water getting in there, that's a sign that the gasket is allowing those two things to mix, which are not supposed to. You can actually do a test in reverse. So if there's oil or combustion products making their way into the cooling system, that also means- And that how gasket... do you check that? Right, well, it's a little bit more complicated and we don't have the bit of kit to do it, but basically what you can do is it involves a little chemical test. So there's a special device that sits on top of your cooling system and it pulls some of those vapors from the cooling system through a special liquid, which is blue. And if it turns yellow, then that's saying there are com the products of combustion in your cooling system. There's only one way it can get there and that's if the head gaskets fail. So that one is a really good test because it means that there's definitely something awry. Okay, so you've replaced the gasket, but what if you're still having a similar issue? What could that be then? Yes, this is not uncommon. People have gone to the whole trouble of replacing their gasket, but they've still got the same symptoms. Well, that, unfortunately, probably it's means- It's even more expensive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't want this. This could mean you've actually got a cracked cylinder head. So um, that major component we have there, the cylinder head or one of them, um, if you get a really unwell engine that's got very hot or sometimes manufacturer defects, a cracked cylinder head will basically cause most of the symptoms that a blown cylinder head gasket will, but obviously it's a lot more expensive. To avoid this, if you've got a really good mechanic or just a, a competent mechanic, when the cylinder head comes off for a head gasket replacement, you should crack test the head every time because you're just it's gonna already break back off on. anyway. Exactly, it's yeah. already off. It's another few yeah. dollars to just get it tested uh, and it could re prevent replacing that and having to do the whole job again. But for the most part, I would say it's a fairly Rare problem to have unless you've got a hot engine, you're trying to put yes. a thousand pound of boost in and running it at 120 degrees. Absolutely. Uh, hopefully that was helpful. We will list all of these things in the notes below. So you can use that to reference if you are in uh, ever need of that information. Absolutely. The best advice with the, with the gasket is just make sure someone has put in a bit of work. Yes. The, like laziness is the biggest thing here. People just look at a temperature gauge that's boiling over or something and go, oh, your head gasket's gone. Do the legwork. Yes. Do a proper investigation because if it is, you want to make sure you're not false diagnosing here. And once you've done that, if you want to subscribe as well. Um, <gasps> that's a great idea. You can win Dan's BMW head gasket. No, you cannot. <laughs> I might need this. <laughs> It's like those, you know, in the olden days the when you were in trouble. Yeah. That's right, that's right. Put, get one, get one. I get you there. in the stocks. That's right. Yeah, I've been a very bad boy. I'll go from the top on that one. Sorry. I just, what did I say? What? Do you want me just to do with my cutting? Did you hear that? <laughs>